Mm, yeah, so... Oh, just one of the many, many bizarre things that have been happening to me over the years. Of course, I already know what's going on, and I'm working my way up into explaining everything in my Dan and Brownfield videos. But, uh, so this stuff will just sound weird to you, and it won't necessarily make a lot of sense, but when I get around to explaining everything in the, in the Dana videos, you'll be able to keep everything in context, and it won't really be so weird. But for the longest time, ah, uh, even back when I was like hanging out with Roger and his, the losers he associated with and just doing all that crack cocaine and stuff like that, I never, I never got busted for drugs or anything. It's like the cops would come and they would bust everybody there, but I said make some excuse why they wouldn't bust me to let me go. Of course, I didn't question it too hard because I'm like, oh, I'm a little lucky. I'm not going I'm not to question my good luck, you know what I mean? It's like, whew, thank goodness. And I think a lot of times Roger really wanted me to get arrested because he'd been in jail a few times and... I guess he felt he knew the ropes, and he thought, I think he thought it was experience I should have. So he was, like, trying to get me busted a lot of times, but the police would never touch me with a 10-foot pole. And, and, I, and, and I just didn't think much of it besides, like, wow, I'm, like, really, really lucky, you know? But then, you know, and then when I came back up the Bay Area, all the weird stuff was going on, and it really freaked me out, and I started using drugs again. And I, I, and I had a few brush. I had, well, I had one brush with the law. Was I was out there, Danny kicked me out of the house. I was living in my car. And then uh, one time, I don't know, some people thought I was acting strange. And I probably was. I was probably talking to myself and carrying on. Because, I mean, I was like, it was a really depressing situation, you know. I was just trying to keep my mind off of it. It was kind of like, I don't know, like it's, living in a sort of a fantasy world and staying high or something like that was actually a good way to deal with it because otherwise i think i would have been like really really depressed because i didn't have anything i didn't have a home i didn't have a job and i was oh, i was always like i never had enough money uh but anyway so, 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 they, so, so i guess someone did call the cops i mean the cop came and it's like i'm thinking like oh great he's gonna see all the syringes on the floor in my car but i was there i thought back and i was like well actually you know uh maybe they'll make me get some help and that might be a good thing you know so I wasn't really so freaked out about it. Of course, it might have been the drugs. I kind of didn't really feel anything bad would happen to me. And the cop, he looks and he sees those syringes. He goes, he goes like, okay, look, I'm not going to not get not gonna run you in. I just want you to get all the syringes out of your car. I mean, I know how it is. Sometimes life, life goes sideways, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, God, he's just a really understanding cop. I don't get it, you know? Uh, I thought that was, like, really weird right there because I thought for sure I'd get busted. I mean... There's evidence that I'm driving under the influence in my car, and he just, like, brushes it off and dismisses it. Doesn't he feel like he had a sense of obligation for, like, other people on the road? I mean, it really, I couldn't get it. And the weirdest thing that happened was, I don't go into details, but I had to, something happened, and I had to, like, go to a hospital. And I had, in my belongings, I had, like, drugs and drug paraphernalia interspersed throughout all my things. And I thought, like, okay... Uh, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna either, they're either gonna, gonna call the cops about it, or they're gonna, like, you know, confiscate and dispose of all the drugs and stuff like that. And then when they released me from the hospital, I looked at my things, and all those drugs and paraphernalia that were interspersed throughout all my belongings, they're all gathered together and put in a little box. And they gave it back to me with my things. I'm like, get real. I just can't be for real, you know? It's like, it's like, and, and then... And then when I, when I decided I wanted to stop doing drugs, I went to the Rockridge Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous over there in Rockridge. And those people were so mean to me and rude to me. And you know, they really didn't want me at the meeting. It was obvious, the things they were saying, the way they were behaving. And it's like, you know, I don't get this because every, everyone who comes to AA meeting, it doesn't matter what kind of scumbag you are. They always you know, welcome you and are more than happy to help you. But these people are like, it's like nobody wanted me to quit doing drugs. Nobody wanted me to quit doing drugs. Um, I don't know. I, I, I sometimes think that because it's because I know these people behind all this. I they're wicked, terrible people, but I wouldn't say they're stupid people necessarily. And maybe they know that doing drugs is going to shorten your life. Maybe they wanted me to die. But I thought like also it could be like I don't know. It's like I noticed the ratings on this 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 show. I know I haven't really got into it yet, but. I know the ratings on this thing, they're, it's really, really popular when I'm messing up. Now, when I'm, like, uh, you know, doing good or not doing anything, uh, yeah, I don't think people are so much inter interested in it, but as soon as something dramatic starts happening, like I'm messing up or something like that, 
they're glued to the screen. You know, maybe it was a ratings thing, or maybe maybe they want to get me out of the way because maybe at some point they're gonna to have to compensate me, and maybe they don't want to do that. Anyway, so yeah, so but yeah, yeah, that, that was really weird. It's like nobody wanted me to stop doing drugs. They're doing everything they could. Uh, to, but the thing is, though. Even though even though these people wanted me to keep doing drugs, they don't have control over the drug addicts, okay? <laughs> because drug addicts are very selfish, and, and, and all they care about is getting more drugs for themselves. So w one of the reasons I quit, aside from all the bizarre stuff going on with people trying to keep me doing drugs, was I just didn't like dealing with that element, because they're like so greedy, they rip you off all the freaking time. Because if those people would have been giving me like a real good deals, or at least a fair deal... There's a good chance I'd probably still be partying just as hardy as ever. But most of the reason I stopped was because those, those scumbags are always out to rip you off. Uh, and plus, since people, all the people, my enemies, wanted me to keep doing drugs, I thought it was a good idea to stop. <laughs> uh, always do the opposite of what your enemies want. That's always a good policy. Anyway, so I just wanted to get that on tape. Um, I'm not really in a real you know, talkative or sociable mood right now, but I wanted to been I wanted to make this 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 video for for a little while now. So just want to get out of the way. Okay, guys, I'll see you next video. Bye.